I will say, didn't realize people had so much disdain for Bruges, but... Maybe that's what hell is. The entire rest of eternity spent in Bruges. Back off, shorty. You don't know karate. Ah! And today we have In Bruges. Funny enough, I mentioned this film uh, just only a couple months ago or so, and I, I've been meaning to watch it for so long. And as always, it's the local art house cinema that was playing Christmas adjacent films for the month of December. And I saw In Bruges was gonna have just a couple nights in the theater. And I thought, perfect, this is my chance because I liked what this director's done that I've seen of his so far. But In Bruges is actually a, a bit of an older movie, 2008. Well, I mean, I say older, that show, shows my lack of age, but for me, it, come on, 08 was a little while ago. So when Bruges is directed by Martin McDonough, if I'm saying it right. Uh, he's been covered recently by me for his work on his newest film, which was The Banshees of Inisherin. And, and that movie, I referenced that he had directed such films as this. I mean, to watch it, so here I finally am. Funny enough, the two stars of Banshees of Inisherin were also the two stars of In Bruges, which is Colin Farrell, who, as I said before, you don't know who this guy is, how, but if you don't know, I mean, look him up, I guess. And then also Brandon Gleason, who I covered a little bit in Banshees as well, just kind of went over his filmography a little bit, but again, I'm gonna try to make this review relatively quick. It is worth noting that Ralph Fiennes, 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 everybody knows him from Harry Potter, but I like him in basically anything else that he's in, uh, including this film. I, I love, <laughs> really enjoyed his character in this film. But yeah, in Bruges, literally just uh, two hitmen that are having a hideout in Bruges after a recent hit goes wrong and then that's that's kind of it they're having to hide out there then a very dark or I guess the term is black comedy ensues I really really liked in Bruges uh, in terms of what it's got going for it I mean there's tasteful cinematography it's a lot of stills until action picks up here and there I mean it's nothing to write home about but it's just solid good direction a lot of scenes in this film similar to Banshees a lot of scenes are just people talking and that's okay because it's good conversation it's for the most part it's well written so got no problems with brandon gleason and colin farrell's respective characters i think they portray them well i think everybody in this film does a good job with their characters uh, whether it's serious comedy playing that thin line between the two it's just it's it's handled really well in this film this film is very funny throughout and borderline hilarious in a bunch of moments throughout as well uh this is a very funny film the dialogue is great i i almost want to say that kind of like nuanced british humor there's the obvious jokes and there's a little like mutterings and side bits and one-offs and all this or just the way that certain characters react because brandon is almost like a father figure He's older, he's more experienced, but he's also like calmer and just kind of more, you know, oh, I'm trying to enjoy this little town we're in while we're here and I'll res respect its history. And Colin Farrell, on the other hand, is more of not a hothead, but he's almost like a, he's very juvenile in this film. He's like a, like a child with a gun somehow. Like, why the fuck do we have to stay here? Can't we go anywhere else? I don't want to stay inside. I want to go out, man. Just like, even though they're there because of his screw up, it's just kind of funny to just, he just pouts a lot and then kind of like will overreact in certain situations, or I should say more childish reactions to a lot of stuff. But they still build up both characters enough where, you know, there's the heart that's there and then you, you care enough for them and you, you start to grow fond of them as the, the movie progresses. Also, uh, I love a good, like, dark or black comedy as much as the next guy. I like when there's very dark comedy in a film. They don't hold back. Uh, sometimes a little bit too much they don't hold back, but not to mention, it's our, they are hitmen, people get shot, and I just love, you know, love good violent encounters on occasion. There's probably only one little bit of, like, gore in this film, but it's mostly just blood and that usual, like, squib from people getting shot or stuff like that, but I, I like violence in my films, and I, in a film like this, the violence when it occurs is completely suited to the situations, so no punches were ever really truly held in the scenes where violence was then called for. And the story was interesting because the story actually delves a bit into like, a little bit into life and existence and kind of what our purposes and the ideas of good and evil and all this because obviously you have two hitmen and one of them likes to wax philosophical about life and the other one is living with the regret of his decisions so it makes for some interesting dialogue and some conversations that are really engaging and enticing and my kind of talks you know and especially when your voiceovers waver back and forth between the super serious talks and then the 
just the stuff that's said so seriously, but it's hilarious when it's said. It's like, Mwah. it's a perfect combination for, for dialogue in a, mo in a movie like this. But the film is not perfect. I have very few complaints about this film, but one of my biggest complaints is that although the characters are fleshed out a bit, I really would have liked to have seen them developed even more. I liked these characters, whether, whether they were the good guys or the bad guys, like every char every main character, you know, female love interest was questionable, but all the main guys that were in this, I was very interested. I wanted to keep seeing more scenes with them, wanted to see wanted to see more of them, learn more about them, and we learn a little bit about them, and may maybe that's the point. We're not supposed to learn too terribly much. We're almost kind of just observers of this story, and as it goes on, we learn just enough about these characters to, to clean on to, to like them, to kind of understand their motivations and complete this journey with them. But personally, I would have liked to have seen more development, but maybe that's just me. And my only other con, I think, is that Look, there's. I'm all up for pushing the envelope on comedy, and maybe 2008 was more of a Wild West wonderland than I recall. I think the point they try to make with some of the dialogue, especially when some of the jokes get a little bit offensive, I get they're supposed to be, you know, no matter how much you like these guys, they're trying to remind you, oh, you know, they're hitmen, they're not necessarily good people, they'll say shitty things because they can also be shitty people. There's a lot of midget jokes for sure, you know, dwarf midget jokes for sure, which, I mean, it isn't like, disparage the community but it's a it's a pivotal crux of the film believe it or not from a narrative standpoint but there's also some like a couple racial jokes that i mean the theater laughed through 99 percent of this film but there was one racial joke that was so out of right field and so not really funny the, it, it, the whole audience like went quiet. Like everybody pulled back. There's a couple jokes like that, jokes about obesity or something to do with like race. Like I just, it's not the entirety of the film, which is good because that would have bogged this film down terribly. But there's a couple moments where I, even I'm like, okay, look, you're you can be a better writer than that. Even if your guy is a juvenile and is you know a, a shitty person who decided to kill for money. I mean, you can you don't have to. Put, you don't have to write that you don't have to put that in the film but they did and it was a little bit weird I didn't like it too much but it, they only do it a couple times and there's a romance in it and the romance is like it makes sense it's decent I didn't not like the romance but I I don't know if the film needed it per se I mean it doesn't it doesn't detract from the movie it adds a little bit I guess but I, I don't know. I feel like you could have had the same movie without the romance, but for the sake of the film, sure, it makes sense. Uh, I'll allow it. But I won't prattle on too much longer. Uh, I'm very glad I finally watched In Bruges. It's been sitting in my Netflix queue for probably the better part of five years, and I'm glad my first experience with it, funny enough, was seeing it in theaters. One more big pro, or the orchestral score in this film. I loved it. It does what a lot of films do. Uh, which I always like to use Up as an example. Up has its main theme of na 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 and it's like used for romance in the beginning, it's slowed down for sadder parts, it's brought up higher for the action adventure, and when you have the final villainous confrontation at the end, it's brought to a sinister level, and it's played for dramatic effect. Similar in this film, you have a theme that's a very, it's a nice, simple, pretty theme that's used, you know, at first just to invoke this idea, like this, this mystery and this calm, and then it's used again throughout, you know, in, in different intonations and all this, and then even more like more sinister bits, especially towards the end, it's used for dramatic effect. It's one of those musical bits that evolves and changes with the film, and so uh, because of that, I enjoyed it. It it really added to my experience and I think to the film's overall narrative. But I digress. Uh, In Bruges is not a perfect film. It's no Hot Fuzz, though I, I liken it to Hot Fuzz thematically. Most of what it sets out to do, it succeeds in doing, and that's great. In Bruges from 2008, I give it a solid four out of five. A solid four out of five. I would have given it higher, but like I said, could stand to have its characters developed a bit more, like even more fleshed out. I would love to have seen that. There are some jokes that go a little bit over the line, just in terms of being unnecessary, didn't really need to be said or happen. But I mean, that's really all I have. But those are two fairly sizable complaints. And the romance, you can take it or leave it. 
I, I'm okay with it, but I don't think the romance really helps or it doesn't help the film. In Bruges, you get a chance to see it in theaters. I recommend doing so if somehow you get a chance to. I doubt it. But otherwise, I think it's I think it's still streaming on Netflix. 100% worth a watch if you're into anything that I just mentioned. If not, you can skip it. But if you don't mind a good old uh, kind of violent black comedy that stars two really good actors who have good chemistry, play off each other well, and just are entertaining in general and give you a very interesting, conflicting story, as in you don't know how to feel about it, then by all means, watch it. I give it a recommend. But that's all I got to say for today about In Bruges. Thank you guys and gals so much for watching, and stay tuned for the next episode of whatever movie I review. And goodbye, travelers.